context. Uh, my story begins uh, with why I am named as. Uh, um, it's not a familiar uh, Emirati name. Uh, maybe there are more Azzas in Sharjah than they are in Abu Dhabi. Um, it's um, definitely more associated uh, to more Egyptians uh, than Emiratis. And everybody would see me and go, hi, your mother is Egyptian. I was like, no, <laughs> my mother is not. Oh, then Lebanese. I was like, no. Um, and. Um, um, actually, my father has named me Azza on, on not his mother, but the woman who brought him up. Um, the woman that he um, grew up around that took care of him uh, when his mother went with his father uh, in different parts of, of Abu Dhabi. Uh, desert and, and the seafront. and I don't know exactly you know, the details of it, but he said, I was always left with Azza, and she was the uh, strongest woman within the tribe. She was married to, uh, she is not a Kubesi, she's uh, uh, a Amri, but she's married to a Kubesi. So uh, this is, um, so he, he used to really tell me how strong this woman was and how important she was uh, in his life. So I grew up understanding that I am Azza, the strong woman. I have, you know, opinion, and, and he, he, he built that in me indirectly, so I can say no when I want to. And um, I, I am the eldest of eight. We're five girls and three boys. Um, and um, my dad, at my time, I keep telling him, oh, you were so strict with us. Uh, with the others, uh, he's, he gives them much more choice than I've ever had. But still, again, um, I, I think I'm very connected with my dad and, and the way we think together. Um, when I finished high school, well, I, I went through the issue of O-level because I wanted to quickly go into HCT. At that time, it was 94. Um, and. Um, I wanted to get married. I wanted to white, uh, wear that white dress. And, um, but um, nothing happened like I planned. Um, um, so um, I went into actually HCT um, after finishing my O level. I was not able to do it in the, school, the same school I was in for most of my life um, because they told me, you're a local. So you can't do all of it. You're not clever enough. So um, I didn't like that. And um, I didn't like anybody to tell me anything like that. So I went to another school, which was Canadian. Um, spent one year, which was very easy for me uh, there. And then the year after, which is grade 10, I went to al Wurud school, where I did my O-level in one year. So I didn't travel with my parents. I stayed over the summer, got the books early, started studying got my O-level, got into HCT without doing my foundation. So straight into HCT. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Not the education I want. <laughs> so I, um, I was quite shocked because I, I expected to have more choices um, in, in the field. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I was still eight. I mean, at that time, no, I was, I think, 18. Um, and um, I just didn't like the choice that was available. But I did the first year, which was a general year. So um, I learned a lot of uh, skills using computer, surfing, typing, um, and many other things that later on in my life uh, came in very handy because I never had time to study them um, at a later stage. So um, after that, I actually had the opportunity to get married and uh, not to somebody from the family. Um, and it's nothing like I imagined. It wasn't the fairy tale uh, kind of lifestyle I wanted. So six months into that, I got divorced. And then it was summer. And my father was sending my two brothers to uh, the UK. I was like, oh, yes, buy me a ticket. I joined them. Um, um, definitely at that stage when I went, I didn't know I was going to stay. Um, but uh, over the summer there, uh, I was in Oxford uh, with both my brothers. I realized I wanted to actually stay and continue. So I started searching and finding out what universities, what are the different fields available. Uh, but I had O-level. That wasn't good for me there. 
I had to get an A-level. So I said, okay, I use it. I start in the summer. I do my A-level. So what choices did I have? I was good in math, biology. I took those two, and then I took art. I've always loved art. I, I always loved to paint and draw. But I never um, thought of it as a career. Or even at that stage, it definitely did not pass by my mind because I never knew any artist in the country or even there. I used to go to museums with my parents over the summer. But again, it's not something that would come in my mind uh, directly. So um, I started. Um, you know, I started my A-level, started getting introduced to all the different art forms, uh, going to museum, um, and I realized I actually found a new language. I wasn't learning how to speak a new language as French or something else. I found art to be a new language for me. I felt happy. I felt it was the door that I never knew existed. Um, I felt... Um, I was doing something that actually inside of me made me a happier uh, and a much, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, happier inside and happier outside, like career-wise thinking, oh, I can be an artist and go back to my country and people will love what I do as an artist. I was thinking too positive at that time. Um, but that really um, helped a lot in getting me through the first uh, few years in uh, living there because my brothers uh, went and uh, moved to Malaysia and I stayed there alone. I moved to London because I was accepted to do the foundation course in Chelsea, College of Art and Design. And there I had a friend for the rest of the period of four years. She's Lebanese and, and she played a big part again in, in my life because it wasn't easy for me to actually adapt and be alone and do everything myself. But uh, she made it easier because she was the constant friend uh, that was around me. Um, at that stage, I definitely knew the form of art that I wanted was jewelry because I was searching and finding uh, all these different uh, mediums that were available. But I wanted to work with my hand and I wanted to be able to use a medium that I knew can reach to my own culture. I was like, what better than jewelry as an art form? And I thought, well, Everybody in my country wears jewelry every day and changes and buys. And I was a jewelry person. I used to wear four or five rings in my hand. I'm not anymore. <laughs> I don't wear jewelry. I'm a jeweler, but I don't wear a lot of my jewelry, especially now. I, um, I'm a new mother. I've gained weight, and uh, most of my rings don't fit me, so I don't wear them. <laughs> um, trying to lose the weight at, at present. Um, so at that stage, I um, decided, well, it, uh, this major will be the best for me. I took jewelry. I did the BA for three years. Um, but um, there was a point where I need to share the fact why my dad actually agreed for me to stay and actually not study something. Because I wanted to study something related to the environment uh, in general. I loved issues of sustainability and other things. Um, it's more related to my dad and his influence on in my life. Um, but I, I felt art would be a better choice. So when I spoke to him, I was like, Dad, I want to be an artist. He goes, what? What artist? You, you are a clever person. Why would you want to be an artist? I was like, what's wrong with them? So he automatically has categorized and, and understood that artists are not clever and academic people are more clever. And I definitely didn't like that, but I changed his mind, to be honest. Um, so he told me, uh, it's your life, it's your choice. Again, I am not anybody. I am as uh, the, you know, the person that... He made me believe that you know I, I had to take choices and be strong. So I was like, I know I'm gonna be you know happy about it. I'm gonna be very successful as a jeweler. You know everybody buys jewelry, so I can't go wrong with this. Um, and he tells me, well, listen, you're not gonna blame me in the future if you fail in this major and come back uh, empty-handed uh, with your BA and can't do much with it. I was like, fine, I'll 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 take the big risk and 
we'll see how it goes. Of course, he had to pay for it. Uh, I knew others that the government has paid for their education, but uh, they weren't artists. And uh, at that stage, when I applied to be paid for by the government, they said, well, uh, we don't think you're important as an artist. So it changed a lot now. <laughs> um, so I came back in 2002, and I was uh, luckily advised by uh, a very close friend of mine um, to uh, get into volunteering. Um, I started my workshop, bought my tools, and started creating my collections. And uh, during that time, I was a full-time volunteer uh, in an organization. I started understanding the mentality. Of course, I was speaking in English. I had an issue. Everybody had an issue with me because I'd say two words in English and one in Arabic, and they just found me to be you know, a person who saw herself. But I wasn't. I was just because it was easier for me to express myself and talk in English, I used English. Um, so basically, being a volunteer in that organization made me speak better Arab Arabic, practice it again and, and, and use it on daily uh, basis. I was able to uh, run projects and establish projects uh, in that organization. And then eventually I um, came up with an idea of uh, working with handicrafts and I helped uh, in Abu Dhabi. I fun, uh, found the two major projects, uh, one in the Red Crescent and the other one uh, was in uh, Adach, but today is with Khalifa Fund, which is called Soga. Um, so I felt I needed to give back, and that was the way I did, uh, through creating uh, those projects and supporting handicraft people. Um, in the same time, I created my own project, which is called Made in UAE, um, in 2005. But before that, I also had my own exhibitions and comment to both of us, Sheikh Nhayan was the person who inaugurated my exhibition. I was very honored that he accepted to do that, but he was, and he is still, one of the uh, people that really support Emiratis and, and want to see us uh, reach the, you know, the, the, the best uh, place we can. Um, and that helped me a lot because people at that time didn't really take me seriously and ju they just thought, I really wasted my father's money, and a lot of people would laugh at me, would laugh at my education, uh, but not today, alhamdulillah. Um, so after contributing, after exhibiting, and exhibiting in Finland, and back again in London, and so on, um, it took me a while to settle and actually uh, feel more uh, uh, complete, and that is when I actually... Uh, got married uh, for the second time um, to an non-Emirati, um, which was a big step for me because I thought um, I, I, it would be very imp hard for me to find an Emirati who would appreciate me. And it was. It was a, a big struggle. Um, I was already 33, uh, 32 at that time, and I felt, no, I really want to ha you know, have my family and different things happen but I you know eventually got married uh, to this person who I actually knew for five years but never saw him as a potential husband at all um, um, forward uh, I have a young girl two years old today um, Last year, I won several uh, different awards. Um, I still contribute in many different ways to the community. I created an incubator in the Western region uh, to support young uh, designers, jewelry designers. Um, and today, I still try to contribute. I also taught at Zayed University this year, which is a big step because I never taught in, in, in a, an academic structure. Uh, it was an interesting experience for me uh, as a learning curve. And in the same time, um, I'm creating more art. I don't know, a lot of people associate me with jewelry only. I'm a sculptor. I create tiny jewelry that you can wear, but also big uh, sculptural pieces that you can have on tables or outdoor sculpture. I work with many different materials, but my business um, that made me continue to be a free artist is actually creating and designing corporate gifts uh, for companies. I uh, design uh, awards uh, like um, uh, Abu Dhabi Film Festival, The Door, 
I, I've been designing it and producing it. Um, I'll, million, uh, million poet. I've been designing for them as well. But also many entities and and. Uh, uh, important uh, events in Abu Dhabi uh, I've been designing for and producing. So that's where I get my money and income from. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, to wrap it up, that's the business. I'm an artist and a mother, and this is today where I feel actually a successful person. People used to see me successful before then, but I never saw myself that successful because I felt um, in not complete uh, like many other uh, women. But now I do see the burden of trying to balance up things, and uh, my husband work with me uh, in the same business, so we try to balance up doing different things together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.